Good morning, this is Kelloland on the go with all you need to know in news and weather as you start your day. A lot of people were stuck at home on their second snow day in a row yesterday. But for a Madison family, being at home put them in a very dangerous situation. The Shaw family was inside their twin home when a gas explosion blew off part of their roof. Thankfully, no one was seriously hurt. I was just laying in bed, um, just trying to get ready to shovel, shovel all this snow after the blizzard. And I just hear this huge boom and I just look up and I could see the sky. The, the roof of my room was gone and my window was blown open and I was, it was just like raining insulation and I was covered and I, I just didn't know what to do. All three family members were taken to the hospital to get checked out. Caleb needed oxygen after inhaling some insulation and his dad had some minor burns, but they are doing fine now. Firefighters in Mission dealt with life-threatening conditions while rescuing a stranded driver during the recent blizzard. Officials say crews were called to the area of the Todd Tripp County line early Thursday morning for a report of a vehicle stuck in the snow with someone inside. Firefighters arriving on scene found a car stuck in the middle of U.S. Highway 18 west of Carter. The person inside said they were traveling from Sioux Falls to Rapid City and took back roads to avoid the closure barriers on I-90. Crews tried to dig the vehicle out but were unsuccessful. Officials then brought the driver to an emergency shelter at the Antelope Community Building. Meanwhile, firefighters in Walworth County had to battle flames and the frigid cold. Emergency management posted these pictures showing the ice that was forming on the ground, the fire trucks, and even on the firefighters themselves. The Mobridge Fire Department was called to the fire Wednesday afternoon. They fought to save part of the building, but the structure is a total loss. Crews were able to get a tractor and a vehicle out. Now let's send it over to meteorologist Scott Munn for a check on our morning weather, and it's a cold start to the day, Scott. Yeah, if we can only get through Friday, fast forward Friday, right? How many people are with me? Because we do have warmer temperatures coming in for this weekend. Numbers do return to the 30s and 40s, but in the meantime, today it will be cold. We have wind chill advisories out there for this morning. Temperatures only in the single digits and teens for afternoon highs. Brian will have more details on your forecast coming up. Thank you, Scott. The city of Sioux Falls has a new tool to help you find storm drains in your neighborhood that are covered up in snow. It's important for homeowners to keep those storm drains clear of snow and ice to prevent flooding, especially with rain in the forecast for next week. There's a map on the city's website that identifies every storm drain with a water drop icon inside a blue dot. We certainly are asking folks to do their part if they can. You know, if they know where there's an inlet in their neighborhood that they go and work to get that opened up so that uh, our crews are able to continue removing snow, filling potholes, and opening up those priority storm drains. The map also allows you to notify the city if there's too much ice in the grates for you to clean yourself. The map will send a work order to city crews to handle the job. It's the largest dart tournament in the world, and it's taking place right here in Sioux Falls this week. The state dart tournament is at the Ramcota Exhibit Hall. Judging by the numbers, the weather didn't keep players away. I mean, they got in here early to make sure, and I, we were at the front desk on uh, Monday night when there were people calling ahead trying to get in early so they could make sure they're here, and they weren't playing until Thursday. So, you know, the impact for this town is awesome that everybody's coming early just to be able to make sure they can participate in the tournament. There are over 3,200 dart throwers competing. Some are considered the best in the world. The competition continues today and wraps up on Sunday. It's been one year since war broke out in Ukraine. Ala Kuranova moved from Ukraine to Sioux Falls in 2011. When war began in her home country, she did not expect it to continue for this long. Definitely not, and I don't think anyone in the world did. You hear the, the messages out when the war just started that the world, and, and Russia in this case, thought that Ukraine won't last more than a couple of days. Well, Ukrainians like me here and in Ukraine were saying we will last that long, but we were just thinking that the world is not going to allow it. Her parents and extended family still live in the war zone in Ukraine. And that's a look at some of our top stories. Now let's get one last look at your weather with meteorologist Brian Carstens. Brian? 
All right, as we transition into weather. Well, we've got some interesting talking points down the road here as we watch the changes in weather. We're going to elaborate on this map here in just a moment. First, I want to go to the short-term forecast, and we're dealing with cold numbers. It's been in the single digits and teens below zero this morning for several locations. And uh, as we start to change the weather a little bit, there could be some uh, snow showers or flurries in the southeast. It looks like if that materializes, It'll be pretty spotty, but just enough there to mention some snowflakes in the air. That's a common event as you start to uh, change the weather. And it's going to go for the warmer side of things. We're definitely going in a positive direction. As you see the numbers, Rapid City tomorrow morning, not as cold. We could see some teens and 20s there for lows. And then look at the day tomorrow. I think we might outperform Sioux Falls on the Futurecast update. We might go closer to 30 for a high. Piers probably maybe a bit shy of 40, but not, not, not off by much. We'll say it that way. And I think that Rapid City should be into the 40s tomorrow and uh, we'll be melting snow. OK, so that story's out there. Now, let's look at this version of future cast. This one takes us out in early next week. So we've got uh, the Saturday forecast fine, mainly dry. One other little tidbit of information is the wind up around the Coteau areas, up around Summit and the Buffalo Ridge in southwest Minnesota. That could get uh, windy enough to blow some snow around, even though the rest of the weather, by and large, is pretty quiet. Let's go to another story. That's this. We got a, a couple of lows coming up. The main one's actually going to be moving up from the south. This is rain Sunday night into early Monday. So how much rain can we get? The, the projections in Iowa and into southern Minnesota, there are going to be some streaks of rain that might even run an inch of water here. So this is something that I think it would be worth your time to check in on it again, just in case there are any other fluctuations on a storm track. There's a little bit of a wintry mix, too, by the way. Ortonville, we could pick on Millbank a little bit and Watertown. We'll see how those temperatures are in that time frame. And by the way, too, there's another system middle of next week. But first things first, there's our weather map for Sunday night. We've got Sioux Falls in that quarter inch plus range, uh, maybe up to that half inch level based on the newest data. There are some models that are a little lower than that, but I think that this is probably at least we'd like to give you an idea of enough rain that it's going to melt some snow and that whole story about finding those uh, spots on your street where your gutters go into those storm drains. Mm, that's worth your time to make sure that that snow is out of the way. So a half an inch of rain would definitely be enough to create some local ponding of water issues. That would again be as early as Sunday night into Monday. Now beyond that, 30s for highs. We'll kind of wait and see on that Wednesday system how that thing comes along. The good news about the 30 degree weather, that's a good pacing for melting. We don't want to get really warm right away after all this snow. Aberdeen will be about the same as Sioux Falls, maybe a tad bit cooler by Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and also for Pier and Rapid City. We'll see kind of a bump up this weekend, kind of flat line there beyond days of uh, four and five, but drastically colder, no. I think we'll probably bottle up that Arctic air for now and even more 40 showing up in Rapid City early next week. That's your weather. Check out more details with the forecast online at keboland.com.